So we begin today with the candle of hope, and then next week is the candle of peace, then the candle of joy, then the candle of love, and then, of course, the large center candle is the Christmas candle, and that will be lit for all the 12 days of Christmas time following Advent. So we'll light the candle of hope. of God. 
life is growing in our midst, a tender branch, a living sign. By water and the Spirit, you are joined to the mystical wonder of Jesus Christ. You have been cleansed by the blood of Christ, and your sins have been washed away. Rejoice in the way of the Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And also with you. Please be seated. I invite the kids forward. There. Oh, she insists. <laughs> okay. We'll have to bring the chair back for you. Yeah. Okay. Good morning. Isn't it pretty in here? Right? I'm sure you're doing some decorating at your house, too. Yeah. Okay. Well, I brought with me this. Do you know what this is? It's a clock. And I'm sure you guys are still kind of learning how to tell time. I remember when I was a little kid, uh, my teacher had like a cardboard clock. Do you remember that, everybody? And, and she would turn the hands of the clock so we could learn how to, to tell time. And the, and the trick is, is the long hand is the minutes here, and the short one is the hours, and the one that keeps ticking is the seconds. Of course, modern clocks, they just give you the numbers now, okay? So we know that it is 9.45. See that? 9.45. So the hour hand is almost to the 10, so it's in that hour of 9. And then the minutes, it's at 45. Now, when you have a friend that says to you, uh, I want to go to a movie with you, a new movie, a real fun movie, and my mom is going to pick you up at 2 o'clock, right? You would, you would get ready for that, right? You'd be excited for that, to go to a movie with your friend. And they said, and they said they'll pick you up at 2 o'clock. Well, what are some of the things you would do to prepare for when your friend arrived with his mom to take you to a new movie? What would you do to prepare? Would you get dressed, right? you put on some clothes, right? You'd put on your shoes, right? You'd brush your teeth, probably. Maybe have some lunch, since it's at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. You need a little bit of something, right? And then you would wait. And you keep looking at the clock, looking at the clock. Or if you didn't know how to tell time yet, you'd be asking your mom, is it 2 o'clock yet, right? You'd be excited for when your friend was going to come and you guys were going to go to that movie. Well, you know, Jesus talks about how he's going to return to the world someday, okay? That's what we talk about when we're in the season of Advent. Can you see the word Advent? Advent, isn't that a strange word? Advent, and it really means the coming of something important, okay? So every year at Advent, there's something very important coming on December 25th, and that is Christmas, right? Christmas, and so we celebrate the birth of Jesus at Christmas. In fact, the word Christmas, Christ, Mass, it has the word Christ in it. So Advent is about looking forward to something really important, okay? And so we're looking forward to celebrating Jesus' birth on Christmas, but we're also looking forward to his great return someday, okay? And did you know what? Jesus says we won't know the day or the hour when he returns. It'll be a complete surprise. We won't know. He does say that we'll kind of know the season, we'll kind of know around the time when he'll be returning, but we won't know the exact day and time and hour, okay? So it'll be a big surprise. So just like you're getting ready for when a friend comes over to take you to a movie, what are some things we can do to get ready for when Jesus returns someday? What do you think? Do you think Jesus wants us to be mean to each other? No? Do you think he wants us to be kind to one another? Yeah. So Jesus says, be prepared because I'm going to come and it's going to be a big surprise and I want you guys to be kind to one another. Love one another, be forgiving of one another, and also help the poor and the hungry because some people really need a lot of help. Okay? And then by doing that, we'll be ready when he surprises us when he returns someday. Okay, put your hands together and let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the great advent of Jesus Christ 2,000 years ago when he was born into this world. And we look forward to the coming of that celebration again this year on Christmas Day. 
But we also look forward in Advent to the great return of Jesus. God, help us to be making ready. Help us to be kind to one another and understanding and forgiving. And help us to care for the poor and those who are hungry. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, you guys can go back. Good job. As you're able, you may rise. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia. Thrones of judgment, the thrones of the house of David. 
Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May they prosper who love you. Peace be within your walls and quietness within your towers. For the sake of my kindred and companions, I pray for your prosperity. Because of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek to do you good. Here ends the psalmody. Thanks be to God. Our second lesson is from the book of Romans, the 13th chapter. Paul compares the advent of Christ to the coming of dawn. We live our lives today in light of Christ's coming in the future. Besides this, you know what time it is, how it is now the moment for you to wake from sleep. For salvation is nearer to us now than when we became believers. The night is far gone, the day is near. Let us then lay aside the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us live honorably as the day, not in reveling and drunkenness, not in debauchery and licentiousness, not in quarreling or jealousy. Instead, put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh, flesh to gratify its desires. Here ends the second lesson. Thanks be to God. As you're able, you may rise for the gospel acclamation and the reading of the Holy Gospel.
wonderful Bible prophecy from Isaiah chapter 2 today foresees and foretells of the great and glorious day when the Lord himself, as it says, shall judge between the nations, and the nations shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks, it says. But what have we been seeing recently? Russia invades Ukraine with a level of brutality against civilians not seen in Europe since World War II. Turkic Azerbaijanis invade Armenia for a second time in recent years. Iran and Turkey team up and increase their attacks on the heartland of the Kurdish people. China increases its incursions into India. And of course, China builds up in preparation to invade Taiwan. But despite all of this, here on this first Sunday of Advent in the year of our Lord, 2022, we profess that the great vision of this biblical prophecy in Isaiah abides and endures, even though we remain ensnared within a fallen and sinful humanity. A fallen human race teetering on the cliff of yet another world at war. With an emerging axis of China, Russia, Iran, and others on one side, and an alliance of America, NATO, India, Australia, and Japan on the other side, lines are being drawn in the sand, and spears are being sharpened. And we can't seem to find an off-ramp to get off of this road toward yet another global collision, global conflagration. But God, our Creator and Redeemer, the Creator and Redeemer of this world and countless worlds beyond, promises us that there shall come a day when swords will be beaten into plowshares once and for all on this beautiful blue planet Earth. When weapons of warfare will be repurposed for construction, not destruction. For life and sustenance, not death. When intercontinental missiles will be repurposed for space technology and research and warheads repurposed for use in nuclear energy power plants. But this prophesied future is not yet revealed and manifested unto us at present. So we live by faith. We live by faith and trust in the Lord God Almighty, professing and proclaiming that God's prophetic word here of hope and peace is the sure foundation we can stake our lives upon. God's word has been spoken, brothers and sisters. God's word has been spoken and it will not return to him empty. It will accomplish that for which God spoke it. The great peaceable kingdom shall come in its fullness someday. The same kingdom we petition for each time we pray, our Father who art in heaven. Thy kingdom come, we pray. Thy will be done on this earth. Our God is indeed an awesome God and has spoken through the prophet Isaiah and has given us this beautiful vision of a time when swords will be beaten into plowshares and spears into pruning hooks and nation shall not lift sword against nation. And as we're called on this first Sunday in Advent to look and see the future that God has in store for our world, this is one of the core beliefs of the Christian faith. On the one hand, we believe that the kingdom of God will come like a thief in the night, as Jesus says, and be like the sudden torrent of the great flood of Noah. And on the other hand, we believe it will be a peaceable kingdom 
for all nations. So on this first Sunday of Advent, we hear and listen to these prophecies of both turmoil and peace, of both global chaos and God's universal shalom side by side here for us to see. But still, the word of the Lord remains and abides and endures, ever pointing and directing us onward toward God's ultimate purpose for his creation. Brothers and sisters, we live in a tension between the present day and the promised day yet to come. And notice too that whenever we try to resolve this tension by ourselves on our own terms, the result is usually disastrous. For instance, many Americans during the 1930s attempted to maintain a peaceable kingdom here on this continent, to maintain a peaceful existence by isolating our nation from Hitler's ambitions and his early conquests. And that attempt failed with terrible consequences for our inaction. On the other side of the coin, we are learning once again that strength of arms alone cannot resolve conflict in the world either. Not in the long run, anyway. But the lessons for this Advent Sunday give us guidance on what we should be about while we're awaiting the day of the Lord's promise. As the Apostle Paul puts it in militaristic terms today, now is the time to throw off the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Put on the armor of light. Put on that armor of light given by God, St. Paul writes. And Isaiah chapter 2 undergirds this by saying, O oh, Jacob, O oh, house of Jacob, come, let us walk in the light of the Lord. <laughs> and elsewhere in the Bible we hear the longing for God's people to be children of the light, equipped with the whole armor of God, always praying for peace and always seeking to be God's peacemakers in the world. So we pray for the peace of Jerusalem, as it says in our psalm today. And we strive to be our Lord's living signs of peacemaking in our lives, among our family members and neighbors and co-workers and so on. And we live in between the already and not yet of God's kingdom. And as we do that, live in that in-between space, our work during this in-between time is to be faithful is to be faithful and do the crucial work, as I shared with the kids, the crucial work of tender-heartedness and kind-heartedness in our lives with one another and all people. If you want to change the world, then be understanding and kind and forgiving of one another, especially those closest to you. This Advent and Christmas seasons and beyond them, let us walk in the pathways of God's all-encompassing light and peace, God's universal shalom. The only armor God's people need, the Apostle Paul insists, is God's armor of light. And for ourselves, as we live in advent of the Lord's eternal kingdom, let us put on the Lord Jesus Christ, as it says today, clothe ourselves, in other words, clothe ourselves with Christ our Lord and live lives that seek to build up, not tear down. Let us pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Let us pray for the peace of all human society, even in the midst of conflict and war. And as we await the full dawn of the biblical day of promise, let's by the grace and power of God actively await this coming day by seeking to live God's future here and now. That future reality God promises here and now, as best we can, in Jesus' name. Amen. As you're able, you may rise.
in response to the good news of the word of God that we've heard this morning. Let us confess our Christian faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed as it's printed in your bulletin. Brothers and sisters, what do we believe? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, who was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sin, and the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated for the prayers of the church. As we prepare for the fullness of Christ's presence, let us pray for a world that yearns for new hope. God of all, your children everywhere cry out for mercy. Awaken the global church of Jesus Christ to the urgent needs of our time. Break down barriers of culture and custom and unite people of all faith in your redemptive and healing work. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of wonder. The earth's beauty and abundance is your gift. Teach us your ways of sharing resources and caring for life. Guard fragile habitats, preserve wild places, and protect endangered plants and animals. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of peace, you judge the nations. Beat our weapons into tools for serving the neighbor. Strengthen the resolve of all who work for an end to the world of wars. We pray for lasting peace in the Holy Land of Jesus' birth. God, in your mercy. God of unity. We pray for all our partners in your mission. Daily Human Care Center, Food and Clothing Ministry. Door of Hope Ministry for Homeless Families. Fred Jordan Missions for the Homeless. Walter Holding Home Women's Shelter Ministry. Fair Trade LA Congregational Coffee Campaign. Linda Gothorn for Wickliffe Bible Translators and the Kochi people, to Hunger Camp Ligidia, the Recycle for Sight Program of the Lions Club, the LA County Beekeepers, Pastor Jack and the BRIM Korean Presbyterian Church, our Willoughby Preschool, our Scout Pack, number 307, Via de Cristo of Southern California in the Central Valley, Bishop Brenda and our Southwest California Synod, and presiding Bishop Elizabeth. Of our Evangelical Lutheran Church in America. God, in your mercy. God of loving kindness, you desire fullness of life for everyone. Fill those who hunger, comfort the grieving, and attend to those near death. Bring help and hope to anyone who is sick or needing your care. Especially Brandon, Shannon, Brittany, Taylor, Chris, Janine, Elsie, Scott, David, Kathy, Bruce, the family and friends of Tricia Hamilton, Audrey Ulevi, Chad, Kenny, Carl, Carrie, Ruth Lund, Lori, Nikki, Chuck, Annette, Lindsay, Judy, Jane, Jeff, Ellen, Ruth, Thresher. Cheryl, Margaret, all of our men and women in military service and law enforcement, our firefighters and paramedics, our governing authorities, our fellow congregation members who are not able to join us in worship, and all of our family members and friends who are in our hearts. God, I'm in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of community, you are present when we gather in your name. Guide congregations in the transition of our conflict. Give wisdom to congregational council, call committees and ministry leaders. Keep us alert to unexpected opportunities for mission. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of promise, your goodness is everlasting. We give thanks for the lives of the faithful in Christ who now rest in your heavenly realm. We trust that you will bring us into the company of all the saints with rejoicing. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of our longing, you know our deepest needs. By your Spirit, gather our prayers.
prayers and join them with the prayers of all your children. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As you're able, you may rise. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is our right.
Now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in His grace and peace forever and ever. Amen.